Lord. My name is Wanyana Hanim, a mother, a farmer, a social worker by profession with a master's degree in public admin. Today, we are going to plant our maize. We are going to do mixed farming as you see. We are planting maize and beans in the same place. As we are going to plant our maize, I would love to take you through the whole process of maize planting or maize farming as you can call it. Mm -hmm. So there, are pro there is a process you, you must follow to achieve a good bumper harvest of maize and good healthy maize. Let me take you through the process. Recently, Kenya put a ban on maize importation from two countries, that is Tanzania and Uganda. Now, the reasons they were giving was that maize that comes from these two countries have inflatoxins that are dangerous to the animals and us, the people. So these inflatoxins are got from, they, they are caused from molds in the maize. They cause cancer and liver disease to the people. Now, to avoid these inflatoxins and this unhealthy maize, you have to follow the right agronomy practices to, to achieve good bumper harvest and healthy maize. So, let me take you through these good agronomy practices as we prepare to plant our maize. The first step is plowing. Plowing in my local language is called Okukabara. So you have to plow your land, that is land preparation. You have to, plant, to plow your land two to three weeks before the rains. This helps you to do timely planting in the future. Then, as you are plowing, the plowing has to go 20 centimeters depth into the land. So, another, another process is planting. Since you've done, since you've done plowing in advance, it allows you to do timely planting. So, timely planting means that you plant at the right season. But nowadays, there is a problem with climate change in my country. You can't know when the rains will come. Now, for example, we expected rain in the month of March in vain. So there is a solution for that. What you have to do is to plant your seeds before the rain comes after plowing. You plant your seeds 10 centimeters down so that when the rains come, they find the seeds already in the what? In the soil. Yes. So another, another practice is good spacing. As you can see, you space two feet by two feet. If not, three feet by three feet. Good spacing helps in bumper harvest. Yes, good spacing helps in bumper harvest. And it, it helps you during the what? When you, you make good spacing with, with rows, it helps you d during the weeding process. Nsigo, take a moe nsigo. Another step is weeding. You rather not plant than leave your garden weeded, because all your efforts will go in vain. Your plant, the plants will be affected by the weeds, and your bumper, and you won't, you won't achieve bumper harvest. So weeding is very important. Now for us here on my farm, we do manual weeding. Manual weeding, take, we do it after two to three weeks of planting. So the first weeding happens after two weeks, we weed, then the next happens after one month, depending on the weed situation here on our farm. But other, other farmers prefer use spray in their garden to minimize the costs of labor. Yes, most of those at 
on, on a large scale, they spray, they spray to minimize the cost of labor. Others use herbicides during the pre land preparation. After before plowing, during the land preparations, they, they use herbicides that control perennial weeds. So another good practice we have to put into consideration is pests and diseases. Pests and diseases. Here in my country, spraying for pests and diseases is a must. Why? Because I don't know what happened to the soils, by the way. Because our granny is used not to spray, but nowadays spraying is a must. You must spray, otherwise all your efforts would go in vain. So, here you have to spray using the right herbicides that are put on the market by the government. Because I was told some chemicals were banned. So make sure that before you buy any 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 herbicide from the from the market, you make sure that it's not banned. Now the most common pest or disease that affects the maize is maize streak virus. This causes yellowing of the maize leaves, causing standard growth in the maize. So what we have to do, we have to carry out a routine checkups in the maize plantation. We, we uproot that maize that is damaged and we, we destroy it. So another practice is fertilizers. Fertilizers are a must. But for us here on our farm, we use natural fertilizers. We have our goat farm. We use the goat droppings from the goat farm that we first keep in one place to reduce the, tox the toxins. Then after that, we apply it to our maize plantation. But others can use urea after one month. You can apply urea to your maize. You can apply NPK, you can apply phosphorus, you can apply, you can apply potassium. Most of those on a large scale. But for us here, we use the natural what? The natural fertilizers. Now, harvesting. Harvesting is a very important aspect in maize, in maize planting. So as farmers, we have to, you harvest your maize depending on what you are going to use it for. If you are going to, to, to just eat it as corn, you can harvest it when fresh and you eat it. But if you are going to make human food and in terms of kosher and animal feeds, you harvest your maize when it is dry in the garden. Make sure that the maize is dry, dried properly on the, when it's still in, in the garden and harvest it. So, after harvesting, you must follow these guidelines. To produce good healthy maize that is mold free remember these molds are the ones that cause the other different toxins that are dangerous to our lives and the animals you see so you have to make sure that you follow these steps downwards that i'm going to take you through to avoid those inflatoxins or to avoid the molds that cause the inflatoxins number one as farmers we need to know hmm? we need to know that we are dealing with food Therefore, we must be very clean. We must be clean when you are handling food. You must dry this maize and it dries completely, number one. Number two, as you are putting out this maize, you have to be clean. Wash your hands, wash your, your, your legs as you are spreading the maize down. Use a tampon or a tundubale to, to put your maize as you are sun drying it. Make sure that the maize is free from animal droppings like the hens droppings, goat droppings. Store your maize, the last one, store your maize in a good dry place. 